Hi, in this video I want to give you some general information about Gothic 3. Gothic 3 is an action RPG for the PC platform. Our mission for Gothic 3 was to create an epic action RPG with the freedom, depth and story quality of the critically acclaimed Gothic 2 while now featuring more streamlined mechanics and a more accessible interface to not only satisfy the existing fan base but also to broaden the audience, especially in English speaking countries. In terms of gameplay and quality, Gothic 3 is comparable to The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, although Gothic 3 focuses more on story than exploration and features faster paced gameplay. The game starts off where Gothic 2 ended. The nameless hero travels from the island of Corinus, where the first two installments of the Gothic series took place, to the mainland. King Robert has lost the war against the orcs, who have now enslaved the human kingdom. There are only a few free humans in the icy north and the southern desert, and a handful of rebels hiding in the forests and mountains of the Middle Realm. In Gothic 3 there are three ways to solve the main quest, with three different endings. You can either join the rebels' forces against the orcs, or help the orcs that are already pursuing a higher goal. Or help the Ashishin, a faction from the desert in the south, who hunt down nomads and sell them to the orcs as mine workers. The story isn't a traditional fantasy story, it's more about conspiracies and intrigues. It's like a blend between a Dan Brown story and a fantasy story. The interesting thing about all these factions in the game, like the rebels, the orcs, the Hashishin or the Nordmore barbarians, is that no faction is really good or evil. Very much like in politics, where there's no real good or evil party, they just have different goals and also different ways of achieving them and the player can freely choose who to support. The Orcs in Gothic 3, for example, are not evil monsters like in many other high fantasy games. In Gothic 3 they are intelligent and organized, very much like the Klingons in the Star Trek universe. And so the player leads one of these three main groups, uh, the Orcs, the Rebels or the Hashishin, to the final victory in the battle for Mitanna. This is achieved by supporting one of these groups in the game, and at one point the player also usually joins one of them. So the player can join the orc forces by climbing a ladder as a mercenary or gladiator, or you can support the rebels in the fight against the orcs by causing mayhem and instigating uprisings, or he can earn the respect of the Shishin by just clever trading and hunting down slaves for the ore mines. Some smaller factions will react to his deeds in several ways. The Nordma tribes may, for example, respect him for his fighting skills as a gladiator, but mistrust him as a collaborator. As all of these decisions have a deep moral background, the story and all of the inhabitants of the world react to the player according to his deeds for one of the other factions. Thus, the player's decisions impact the turn of events heavily and are always meaningful in the larger context of the general struggle going on. The micro gameplay follows the established formula for successful action RPGs. So everything the player would expect is there. Fighting monsters, collecting loot, casting spells, talking to other NPCs, gathering information, solving quests, trading items, training the character, you name them. This established formula becomes much more interesting though through the simulated world and the advanced AI in the game. The inhabitants of the world are organized in tribes and guilds. The player's character has relations to these groups and a certain reputation within the world, which affects the way these groups talk to the player, the quests and items they give to him and the areas he has access to. Through this, every dialogue with NPCs can be different for different players. As every action feeds back into the world simulation, the player shapes his own unique gaming experience. And now some words about the game world. The mainland of Gothic 3 is about five times the size of the island of Corinus where Gothic 1 and 2 took place. The game has three completely distinct environment types. The fertile and densely forested middle realm that we've seen first, Varun, the desert that we've seen just before, and Nordma, the icy north. This variation and the huge size of the world give the game a real epic feeling.